In this video, we're going to talk about storage auto scaling of Azure Files Premium. This is a feature that's available in Nervia Manager for WVD starting with version 2.10. Let's start out by going to storage and navigating to the Azure Files page. And this is the page where we can see all of our currently linked Azure Files share and are able to manage these file shares. Now, what you'll notice here is we have some file shares that are uh, Azure Files Premium and some that are standard. One thing to keep in mind is that auto scaling is not available for Azure Files standard storage, and that is because it's really not required because both capacity, costs, and performance um, is not controlled by the size of the quota that is set on Azure Files standard, but it is on Azure Files Premium. So that is what we're going to focus on today. So you can see that I have several Azure Files Premium shares and all of them have auto scale turned off. So let's go ahead and try to configure Azure, uh, Azure Files auto scaling on the Premium FS Logix share that's listed right here. So we're going to go to Manage, select Auto Scale, and we will see a fairly familiar screen to those of you that have worked with the auto scaling on host pools with Nerdia Manager. And there's a few important differences and a few important things to note. So a premium file share is built based on its provision shared size, regardless of the used capacity within that share. A premium file share can range in size between 100 gigabytes and 102,400 gigabytes. And I.O. network bandwidth limits are determined based on the provision share size. When auto scaling is turned on, then auto scale will automatically grow the provision share size in response to either anticipated demand or if it notices that the latency on the storage responsiveness has gone up, which means that there is you know, more, uh, more demand on the share than is available uh, than available capacity. And then it will also be able to decrease the provision quota size when that additional performance is no longer needed. The first thing we're going to do is let's turn on auto scale at the high level at the top here, which is going to enable it. And then we have three uh, three settings or three sets of settings to configure. The first one is the provision size or also known as the quota. Here we define what units we want to use. Do we want to use the absolute um, type of units in terms of gigabytes, or do we want to talk about relative percentages based on current utilization? So let's go ahead and start out with absolute uh, numbers. And the first thing we'll do is we'll define the minimum size of this uh, Azure file share. So the minimum size can never be smaller than 100 gigabytes. And it obviously can never be smaller than the used capacity. So first thing is we start with our used capacity as the base and we tell the system how many additional gigabytes to always maintain. So in my case, I have a very small share. I'm using 53 gigabytes. And let's say I always want to maintain a specific size buffer. Let's say I want to maintain a buffer of 50 gigabytes, which means my current usage of 53 plus 50 is going to give me a minimum size of 104. And again, the minimum can never be below 100. And what this means is that as my used capacity grows, the system will automatically maintain this minimum buffer to always have a certain amount of free space. So I will never run out of free space on my share because my storage auto scaling even before we get into any performance considerations, is going to grow my quota to make sure that I have a buffer. Now, if I want to think in terms of percentages rather than absolute gigabytes, I can select relative percentage here, and I can say that I want to add a certain amount of free space to my minimum current active uh, used capacity. So if I say I want to always double the size of my share, which is obviously a lot of extra space that's mostly not necessary, then it's going to take my use capacity and double it 
and now that's going to be my minimum. And as my capacity grows, the system will always maintain a buffer of this size. Because of how small my current use capacity is, a relative amount doesn't really make a lot of sense, but in large environments, it certainly does. You may want to keep 10, 20, 25% free space to avoid the situation of running out of space in the file share. But let's go ahead and switch back to absolute and let's change this to 50. The next thing we define is what is going to be our maximum file share size. And the maximum has two components to it. There is the component relative to use capacity. So if I, my minimum is going to be use capacity plus 50, my maximum may be something like use capacity plus 500 or 1000 or whatever the right number is. And the auto scaling engine has the freedom to move the quota between the minimum and the maximum size as defined here. And then there is a defined total ceiling that prevents the system from increasing the size of the file share indefinitely. This is just kind of a protection mechanism against some runaway process causing the file share to, to become really unresponsive and, and the auto scale will continue growing it and growing it and growing it. This gives you a protection against growing it too far. And then on the right side here, you have a performance calculator that's going to automatically tell you what the baseline IOPS, burst IOPS, egress and ingress um, uh, rates are going to be for the selected size. So it's going to tell you what the minimum is going to be and what the maximum is going to be. So at our minimum size, at 104 gigabytes, we're going to have baseline IOPS of 504 IOPS per second. We'll have a burst of 4,000. Maximum is going to be 953 based on, sorry, 954 based on this maximum size, uh, et cetera. And you can see the, the egress and ingress rates. Let's skip the scheduled quota increase just for now, and we'll come back to it in a minute. And let's go into the scaling logic configuration. So the scaling logic configuration is what allows the auto scale engine to determine when to grow the share and when to shrink it. And it is based on two available um, metrics that Azure file shares provide uh, via the API, uh, among others, but these are the ones that indicate latency. There are two types of success server latency. Success server latency tells a, the story of, of how long it's taking for an IOP to be processed. Um, and depending on your environment, different tolerances may be configured. So the default value is going to be a success server latency being average, um, uh, being the average value. There's also a way to measure the maximum value. In some cases, one makes sense over the others. But let's start with average. And the system is going to increase the quota or scale out by 10 either gigabytes or percent. Let's switch to percent for now. So it's going to grow the current quota by 10% if the server success latency exceeds a certain threshold in milliseconds for a certain duration. So for instance, if we say if our latency is exceeding 20 milliseconds over the last five minute period, and there is a handy um, real time value here that tells you what it is currently over the last five minute interval. And you can see it's 1.5 milliseconds because uh, this file share isn't being used at the moment. This is going to tell the system how to scale out and it's going to continue scaling out until either it reaches the maximum size, which is specified right here, or until the latency, the success server latency on average is below 20 milliseconds for over the trailing five minute interval. So this is how you increase the quota to give yourself more performance. And then it will decrease the quota by 20%, so in larger chunks and in larger increments, if the successor latency drops below, in this example, 10 milliseconds for the trailing 15 minutes. And again, a handy little tip here, that the current latency over the last 15 minutes is 2.43 milliseconds, 
So that means if we were to enable this right now, no scale out or scale in event would happen because we are below the scale out threshold. A very, very important consideration is that a limitation of Azure Files Premium is that the provision quota, the provision size or the quota can be decreased only once every 24 hours after the latest, the, the most recent quota increase. So if let's say in the morning, there is a log on storm and users log in very quickly, and then the latency drops later in the day, storage auto scale will not be able to decrease the quota size until 24 hours after the latest increase. So that's something to keep in mind that once you increase, you're committed to that amount for 24 hours. And the next time it can be decreased is only 24 hours later or longer. And that takes us back into the scheduled quota increase configuration. Scheduled quota increase configuration uh, is similar to a pre-staging concept where if you're anticipating a certain amount of a high utilization, you want to have a certain amount of capacity and IOPS av available during a certain time rather than waiting for latency to creep up and scale out in small chunks. However, because of this limitation, because the provision size can only be decreased 24 hours after the last quota increase, specifying a date range or a, a, a range of days here means that you are committing to having the quota be increased for that entire duration. What do I mean by that? So if I were to select Monday through Friday, and I would say increase my quota by 100%, okay, that means that I am committed to having this quota increased all the way from Monday through Friday, from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m., those entire five days of the week. So it wouldn't be increasing uh, at certain time and decreasing during other times. It would increase on Monday and it would decrease on Friday. This is still very useful when you have certain days of the week where you have peak performances for a peak performance needed. For example, you may be doing a large processing or you may be doing updates that are IO intensive on the weekend. So you may select uh, Friday through Sunday or maybe Saturday through Sunday as your date range and increase your quota to allow for faster updates to happen over the weekend. And then during the week, you're just going to rely on this scaling logic only in response to latency. Or alternatively, you may say, hey, on Monday through Friday during the work week, I want to have a certain amount of capacity available to me. But outside of that time, I want to drop down to my minimum size because I get very little activity on the weekend that requires the additional um, uh, IO performance. And that's what the scheduled quota increase ca uh, capability is. It allows you to set up a date range and the set quota size for that date range. So this is how storage auto scaling with Azure uh, files works. So once we enable auto scaling and uh, configure it, you will see it's now enabled in the auto scale column. It will tell us what the configuration is, and it will actually help us track the current latency. Once there is activity, you will see data starting to appear. And as it needs to scale out, there will be tasks logged down here. So you can see when it's responding to increased activity and when it's scaling back in once the latency has dropped below the configured threshold, in this case, 10 milliseconds. I hope you found this useful. Looking forward to showing you additional storage auto scale capabilities for Azure Meta files and other capabilities in future videos. Thank you.